Welcome to another episode of Let's Chat With. Joining me is Cincinnati home chef, vegan recipe developer, top vegan competitor, and musician, Teresa Stone. How are we doing today? We're doing great. Thank you for having me. So you're a vegan. For those who don't know, what's the difference between vegetarianism and veganism? I'm going to tell you a little joke about my Spitfire grandmother. Um, back when I was in college, I was actually vegetarian, vegetarian for 10 years before I became vegan. After I had become vegan, my grandmother would introduce me to uh, friends of hers and she would say this is my granddaughter she's a vegan and that's the worst kind of vegetarian and I always thought that was kind of funny um, and I, I think that um, it is a more restrictive form of vegetarianism so whereas vegetarians may eat eggs they may eat um, dairy cheese honey a vegan will avoid all of those things. So a vegan is truly plant-based, so no animal products. And then some people take it a, a step further and um, make a more, more lifestyle decisions like not wearing uh, wool or not wearing leather and that kind of thing. What was your reason for going vegan? Uh, I would say that it was an ethical reason. Um, my husband and I, who were both vegetarians at the time, uh, chose to go vegan for for kind of just ethical reasons. What was it like when you told people for the first time? Yeah, um, I would say <laughs> my my mom didn't take it too well. I think she cried. I, I think she could handle um, us being vegetarian, but it was just a whole nother layer of complexity and a whole new set of rules with being vegan that was, um, I think, very difficult uh, for her to accept in the beginning. Now, having said that, my husband and I have been vegan for 25 years. We have raised two vegan children. My mom um, loves my cooking, um, gushes to everybody about what a great cook I am. And so I think that uh, I think that I won her over. Who taught you how to cook? Uh, yeah, I would like to say um, my mother, but I had no interest in cooking whatsoever when I was a kid. None. Um, it was not really until I was in graduate school that uh, I really started dabbling in cooking. And I will say that it was um, not, not a very successful beginning. I tended to be maybe more confident than I should have been. I would think, oh, well, I have a recipe. I know how to do this better than the person who developed the recipe. I'm going to go and do my own thing and then had a series of disasters. And uh, I, I think I eventually realized that there is a recipe for a reason. It has been tested. It has been proven. And so eventually I realized the value of that and would stick pretty close to recipes until I got a lot of experience under my belt and then at that point, then I realized that I could, you know, make modifications, I could develop my own ideas. And so it was definitely, definitely a process. But I would say that I am entirely uh, self-taught, um, you know, first through learning through cookbooks and then just later my own experimentation. You hail from Cincinnati, Ohio. What is your city's vegan, vegetarian, plant-based food scene like? Um, the scene in Cincinnati is... Uh, l let's just say there is room for improvement. <laughs> I would say we do not eat out a lot. I cook virtually every single meal, every single day, because there are not a lot of choices. Um, now Columbus, that is where the show Top Vegan was filmed. Uh, it has quite a bit more choices than Cincinnati does. Um, and especially more of maybe high end offerings, which is the thing that excites me. So it's always good to go uh, traveling, be exposed to restaurants and cuisines that just are not in Cincinnati. I really, really wish we had a more diverse um, set of vegan options than we do. You are a vegan recipe developer. What is that? And how did you become one? Um, I would say an informal um, recipe developer. Basically, the people I cook for are my family. So I take um, things that they enjoy, their, their palate in mind, their preferences, and I incorporate those into recipes. I would say most of my ideas are pretty much in my head. Um, there are a few things that I have written down as a proper recipe. And I'm in the process of doing it now because my two children, I have a son who's a sophomore in college and my daughter is getting ready to graduate high school and she'll be in college. 
And they both need kind of a, a repertoire of very simple recipes that they can follow so that they can become, you know, cooks in their own right. So that's what I'm kind of doing now is just compiling a very, very simple collection of family favorites to, um, to give to my kids so that, you know, once they're out on their own, that they can, they can learn to cook. What is your favorite dish to make? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And I'm a little funny in that I do not repeat dishes very often. There's kind of the running joke. My, I'll ask my daughter, well, what do you want for dinner? And she'll say, oh, what about, what about this thing? And then she'll, she'll think, and she'll say, Oh, you made that six months ago. You're not going to make it again. <laughs> and so <laughs> and so I do not repeat dishes very often. Um, but I, I will tell you that there are there are things that I, I will do for a special occasion that kind of make repeated per, uh, appearances. Um, for instance, my husband loves a dish that is a phyllo strudel and it's stuffed with artichokes and homemade almond feta cheese and it's topped with a roasted red pepper sherry sauce so that's definitely uh something I pull out on his birthday uh, my son just celebrated his 20th birthday and what he asked me to make for him was um uh pad thai and I make it with uh woodier mushrooms with turnips with tamarind it's really really spicy it has a nice crunch from the peanuts. And so that's his favorite. Um, for my daughter, for her birthday, she always, always asks for the same thing. It is um, kind of a chickpea cashew cutlet that's formed into a patty sauteed. And then it's got a white wine and lemon mushroom sauce with capers and parsley. So it's nice and bright and light. Um, so that's her favorite. Always serve it with mashed potatoes. And then for me, what do I like making? I love making, I like making homemade bread. What I, I really enjoy in the height of summer is homemade bread that's been toasted. So it's lightly brown. And I like to make um, shiitake bacon. So you cut the shiitake mushrooms really, really thinly. And you have a little bit of sesame oil and smoked salt and you bake it until it's crispy and it's salty and it's savory. So put that um, on a sandwich, like a BLT with a, a tomato that just came out, from, you know, still warm from the garden, a big red beefsteak tomato slice, some basil mayo and some microgreens. So that's my version of a BLT. And so that's that's what I love having in the in the height of summer. I don't make stuff like you, but the one thing that I can make is uh, uh, fried tofu popcorn. Ah, it's a little, okay. it's a little um, like you fry the, to uh, the tofu and like you put it in some flour, some vegan eggs, and then some spices. And then you fry it up in a little pan with some olive oil. You get it golden brown on each side. And it's like a little entree, little like appetizer dish you can use and stuff like this with little uh, vegan mayo, sriracha dipping sauce that I always make beside it. That sounds that sounds good. So are you vegan? Yes, I've been since last summer. Oh, well, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. What do you uh, say to people who think the vegan uh, is just eating three salads a day, a day? I think maybe the corollary of that is the, the maybe the type of, I'm thinking the type of restaurant where um, all they serve is like, you know, straightforward meat replacements like Beyond Burgers. I mean, I would much rather have the salads any day of the week than the straight on. I'm just going to give you a Beyond Burger with the fake cheese. I like everything I make is from scratch. I don't do any of the processed meat replacement or the cheese replacement things. So to me, I would say a salad is good as long as it's not iceberg lettuce with, um, you know, with no dressing, which you do see, you know, in the, the token cherry tomato, you do see that from time to time, but a salad can be a great thing. So um, no beef with salads, uh -huh, pun intended. But um, yeah, so I'm all for salads. What advice do you have for someone who wants to become vegan or vegetarian? I would say start small, start maybe gradually. Like, like I had said before, I was vegetarian for 10 years before I became vegan and actually never thought I would be vegan because I like cheese so much. And I think the the thing that really allowed me to make the transition was I was able to find substitutes for dairy that were very tasty. So um, I don't use any of the processed milks. I make my own almond milk from scratch, which is a great replacement for dairy milk. It bakes well. 
Um, it's really rich. Um, I make my own um, cashew cream, which is a great substitute for heavy whipping cream. And like I had mentioned before, I make my own almond feta. Um, you can make really great um, kind of bechamel sauces that double as, you know, cheese sauces or, or queso, like for nacho cheese. So yeah, I, I think you need to just find substitutes for things that you already love, and that will make it a lot easier to transition from a vegetarian to a vegan diet. Now you're a competitor on the YouTube cooking show, Top Vegan. How did you get involved? Have you ever competed in something like that before? I have never competed in any kind of competition, well, formal competition like that before. Um, last summer, there was a notice that was put out on a uh, vegan Facebook page. I think it was like Vegan Ohio. And it was basically a, a casting call um, asking for or, you know, home chefs or private chefs or restaurant chefs to uh, submit a portfolio and uh, try to be on this show called Top Vegan, which, you know, was basically billed as being similar to uh, Top, v uh, Top Chef or Master Chef, something like that. And so I thought, because I, I have always watched um, all of the competition shows. I mean, I love Top Chef watching it now. Um, it's something that I always wanted to do, but never thought as a vegan I would be able to do. So I jumped on the chance, um, submitted a handful of photographs of my food and um, basically a description of what kind of flavors there were in the dishes that I had submitted. And then about a week later, I had gotten an email that said I was selected for the show. So I was very, very surprised and um, very uh, uh, panicked for a moment because I I thought, oh gosh, what what have I done? What have I gotten myself in for? <laughs> but it, it was a great experience and um, was so glad I got to be a part of the show. What have you learned from being on Top Vegan? Let's see, what have I learned? I think I learned that um, I have a lot of skills. Um, I, I think I also learned how to cook within a time limit. That was the challenging thing for me uh, as a home cook. You know, there's there's no deadline, there's no clock racing. And so I think that that was something I learned how to do was actually be really efficient. For instance, if you watch the show, I make a lot of bread. So I know that that's the first thing I have to do is I have to get the bread onto rising. And so when that's rising, I can do all of these other things. I can chop the onion. And while that's going, I can do something else. And so I really learned how to multitask. So that was something that I learned on the show. And I think the other thing is I learned how to trust my instincts. You know, if I made a mistake, I learned how to pivot the next time around. Um, so it was definitely a growing experience and I feel like I'm an even better cook for having participated on the show. Besides the food aspect of the show, what do you hope people take away from it? I hope that they see that um, that vegan food is diverse, that it's exciting, it's delicious. What amazed me was that uh, with each challenge, there would be a theme to the show. You know, the, the first theme was American classics and all of the competitors took that theme in different directions. So it was, it was just great to see the variety of food that was possible. So I think that's probably the number one thing for people to take away that is it's just a lot of a lot of things to explore that I think most maybe omnivores don't don't explore, which is a shame. Do you think the Food Network and Cooking Channel will ever have a top vegan like show? Yeah, that's that's the thing, isn't it? Is is there a big enough audience um for that? So this particular production was Indian independently produced. And I, I think that it would be great if enough people watched so that it could get on a bigger platform. I think that would be fantastic. And I'm, I'm really happy for opportunities like this to, you know, kind of spread the word about the show. So that's, that's awesome that you've heard of us and are 
seeking to kind of put the the news out there. After the competition, what does the future hold for your cooking? So as I had mentioned before, I'm writing recipes for my kids. I would like to have maybe a, a, a pop-up um, sometime this summer, invite um, a few people. Um, that's something that I've not done before is have a, a, you know, a large number of people that I've cooked for. So I think that would definitely challenge me and keep me on my toes and, um, you know, keep up in my game and cooking. I think the other thing is I would like to do uh, more traveling. I think when you travel, you really get a lot of um, ideas for cuisines. Like um, last fall, my husband and I went to Europe and we traveled around Germany and Czech Republic and Austria. And it was really fun to come back with a lot of ideas um, for things that I could try and incorporate in my own kitchen. And so I'm hoping to do that again in the fall. My husband and I are thinking maybe Italy this time. So that would be fun. So definitely um, cooking is is something that um, I don't think I'll ever get bored with. There's so much, you know, so many things to explore, so many different ingredients, so many different kinds of cuisines. So it's always very, it's exciting. Besides being a chef, back in February, you released an instrumental piano album called Spruce. How old were you when you started playing piano? Why did you want to release an album? And why name it Spruce? And where can people find it? Uh, yes, my album Spruce. So um, I started playing piano as a kid. I was probably uh, maybe five or six. And I will say that I was um, not a precocious student. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> did not like piano, did not like practicing the piano. Um, it's because there were so many rules and the piano teachers would always say, oh, you're not doing the fingering right. Oh, your fingers are not curved the way they should be. Oh, the dynamics are all wrong. And there were so many rules and it was so discouraging that I did not like piano. And I'll just tell a little funny story. Um, my dad was in the Air Force and uh, there was one assignment where we we're going to move to Germany. And so as a result, all of our household belongings had to be put on a boat and then, you know, obviously shipped off to Europe on a boat. And I hated piano so much that my, and my mom will always tell the story that I said, I hope the boat sinks and takes the piano down with it. <laughs> Unfortunately, the boat didn't sink and I still had to take piano lessons once we got to Germany. <laughs> but uh, after, oh, I don't know, it was probably maybe when I was 12 or 13, I stopped piano and there was a big long gap where I didn't play at all. And it wasn't until I had kids of my own and my, my son had um, really some promise to be a good musician that I thought, well, let's get a piano. Let's have him take piano lessons. And so when he took piano lessons, I decided as an adult, I wanted to try it again. And so I took a couple of years of lessons, enjoyed it more than I did as a kid, that's for sure. But I think the thing that I really liked was not playing other people's songs. It was the maybe the more the creative process of coming up with ideas myself. Um, I, I don't think there's anything more satisfying than and, you know, sitting down at the piano, just in playing impromptu things and then coming across a few notes and you think, oh, well, that's an interesting idea. Oh, I wonder, wonder if I can explore that. So you play a little bit more and, and you think, wow, that's that's pretty good. I think maybe I'll I'll develop that idea. And you play a little bit more. And so my process is I'll I'll record uh, pretty early on in the process. I'll record a little bit of what I'm working on and I'll listen back to it. I'll listen back to it like over and over and over hundreds of times. And if by the 300th listen, I'm not bored of it, I like it even more than I did on the 10th listen, then I know that I have you know, a really good idea and I know that I have to complete the song. So it's a it's a really interesting process. So I will say that all of the songs were written for my mother for either like a birthday or like a Christmas present or a Mother's Day present. And it was over the course of a few years. And finally, at maybe toward the end of last year, I realized, hey, I've got so many songs I, I could really I have an album I wonder what's involved in that and so I looked into it and it's really easy to you know get your music out there so you find a distributor you pay a nominal fee and 
voila, you can get your, your songs on Spotify or Amazon music, uh, Apple music. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, um, and I think the most exciting thing is that my mom can, you know, say, Alexa, can you play Teresa Stone? Oh, I think, I think I just songs by Teresa Stone. It's, Amazon music. it's not my Alexa's playing Alexa off, <laughs> but I, I, it's fun to be able to see your own music, you know, out there in the world. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, and then the other question you asked, why Spruce? Yeah, that's kind of funny. So when you put your music out there, you have to have album art, right? And so one of my other passions is photography. And so I'm like, oh, I should put one of my photos on the album art. And so I thought, oh, what photo would I like? And so there was this really dramatic mountain scene that I had taken uh, when we were in Germany. And it's, um, you know, got some, some evergreens in the foreground, and then it's got some dramatic clouds and then some, some mountains that you can see off in the distance. And so I'm like, well, it's got to kind of relate to the album art. Okay. There's, there's evergreens, maybe I'll call it spruce. And so then I named all the songs, you know, variations of flowers. And so that's basically how I came up with it. Finally, where can people find more information about you? Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, website? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and um, I am at veganfooding dot and dot shooting. So vegan fooding and shooting. Thank you, Teresa, for joining me on this episode of Let's Chat With. Thank you so much. This was fun. <laughs>